inches closer to a boarding the mission. With the vital computer links temporarily holding, the moment of decision is now. Okay, I'll flight controller is done over landing. Retro. Go. Right up. Go. Nice. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom or go for landing. Eagle, get that you're go for landing. Over. Hurtling toward the moon at 3,800 miles per hour. Neil Armstrong notices his checkpoints are all appearing too soon. This means a serious navigation error. He thinks you're a little bit long downrange. At these speeds, three seconds long means missing the safe landing zone by three miles. Suddenly, the computer starts firing maneuvering thrusters, jolting the ship back and forth. This has happened in simulations, but never this much, never this violent. The smooth descent is becoming a bumpy ride. Before that is fixed, a problem with the onboard computer. The problem is here. Well, well, to alarm. The astronauts have rehearsed for thousands of possible malfunctions, but not this one. It had been considered too unlikely. Seconds seem like hours as everyone struggles to remember the meaning of a 1202 program alarm. The deadline to safely aboard is vanishing fast. 1202 means the Eagle's onboard computer is overloading. This means Houston is blind, unable to make navigation corrections or interpret the data coming from Eagle's computer. Armstrong and Aldrin are on their own. Mission Control decides they can go ahead. We're going that way. We're going that way. If the data link doesn't fail again. We got you. We're going that alarm. 1,000 feet, and Neil Armstrong can see that the computer is proposing to put them down in a dangerous place. That landing site is full of boulders. If they land there, they will never take off again. At 350 feet, Armstrong ignores his computer navigation and veers away from the rocky landing site with no time to explain to Mission Control. Okay, I'll fly controller and cut. In Mission Control, everybody is stunned. At 300 feet, the Eagle has left its flight plan and taken off at full speed across the face of the moon. Eagle, Houston is decent to fuel. Monitor over. 90 seconds of fuel remaining. Now less than 200 feet, and the Eagle is too low to safely abort back into orbit. They call this part of the flight plan, Dead Man's Curve. No level. No level. All that's left for mission control is to read off the fuel remaining in seconds. 60, 60 seconds. 60 seconds. The entire moon landing has come down to two men and one minute. Forward. Forward. down to half. After 30, 30, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, forward. Right on. Down to the half. Forward, forward. 30 feet, go to half now. Right, well, I'm 
A short time later, history is made again. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. For one incredible moment, we are one people with one history, watching our destiny unfold. something which was surprising to me had occurred as I was standing on the surface just after we had landed I'd gone down standing on the surface and looking at planet Earth for the first time uh, seeing the beauty seeing the, the finiteness of it the, the limits of it uh, and realizing what a shame it was that people were confronting each other on that planet without realizing what it was doing to the planet. It was a very emotional moment for me. I actually shed a couple of tears. Uh, something totally unexpected for, for an engineer and fighter pilot to be, to be crying up, quietly up there on the moon. Mankind had achieved a tenuous foothold in the heavens, and a new and exciting world lay waiting to be explored. But over the next three and a half years, five more Apollo missions visited the moon, and with each one, we stayed longer, roamed further, and discovered more. I never thought when I was a kid building rockets, you know, in high school, that we would go to the moon, you know, before the end of the, of, of the century. I mean, I thought that was something that was way in the future, fantasy. We need to reach beyond our grasp. We need to strive to do things that seem impossible because in the accomplishment of them, we move society forward. One of the astronauts has said, those hills that we climb give our children and grandchildren a different perspective that they see the mountains that we couldn't see. And so, what we consider impossible, they're dreaming about. stand here and tell you that I lived on the moon, that I called the moon my home for three days. You tell me what is impossible in this day and age, much less in a generation that follows, much less into the 21st century. Nothing is impossible. I like exploring things, inventing. Uh, I would like to go up there and find out what's really up there. I would like to be an astronaut. I like to design rockets. Payload specialist. I'd be a ground control officer. The thing that my mom can't understand is I'm terrified of heights, but I want to be an astronaut. There's 
so many things I'd love to do. I would explore, I'd look for everything. I would try to start a farm. Millions of other galaxies that you might be able to live in. It's the unknown. Anything's possible. You may be able to cure certain diseases. Mm -hmm. Climb Mars and dance on it. Play basketball, but you can still be short. Because then you could like fly up in the air. Baseball and be awesome. Hit the ball, you get a home run every time. There are a lot of things that can benefit mankind that we because of science we simply cannot do on Earth. It's such a big universe and it's kind of strange to think that just this one tiny planet was chosen to have life on it. I hear they're finding new planets or moons and they're finding out more about how stars are working and it makes me feel like it's trying to tell me something. What's it trying to tell you? That you belong up there with them. The Apollo program ended in December of 1972, but our journey into space is just beginning. I'm Neil Armstrong. The future of space travel is being written right now in the dreams and imaginations of a new generation. Perhaps that's the greatest legacy of Apollo. It shows our children and grandchildren that with courage, imagination, and the will to explore, no dream is impossible.